Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for your word, and we thank you for your presence. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we have gathered and to hear from you, may your word change our hearts and enable us to forge forward through our prayer life. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we have prayer month coming up. And Dave has asked me to talk about prayer. And thank you, Monica, for the song choice. And it's like we should start praying because most of the words is about prayer and adoring God. So when we talk about prayer, it's a broad thing and it's something that we all do every day. And it's life of Jesus that when he was on earth, the Bible says that before he got into his ministry, the Spirit led him to the wilderness to fast and pray. And after he got himself ready for his ministry, we can see that throughout his life, with his ministry, he always retreat to pray. And on the Mount of Sermon, uh, on the Sermon of Mount, he included prayer, how to pray. So, prayer is our lifeline, and it's the only way that we can connect with God. So, if we don't have this part of uh, duty in our Christian life, then we don't know how we will get on. So, Today, I would like to be very brief. It's a broad topic. So many things that I have jotted down. And I would also like, to, like us to pray because it's about prayer. So I can't get any scripture to back up than the Lord's Prayer. That's the only thing that Jesus taught us how to pray. And we've all been taught how to pray. And you might have learned it wrongly or been taught wrongly. And you have taken the classes or what you have been taught wrongly. But there is a pattern that Jesus gave to all of us. And what I was taught, before you go to, you start praying, confess your sin. And I've been doing that for a while until Dave <laughs> asked me to talk about prayer. And I look into a bit deep and I found that, uh, no, I don't come to God to confess first. Because the enemy can take that and use it to against me, make me feel guilty, and ha don't have boldness to go before God. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, which we all know, verse uh, 9 to verse 9 to 30, he said, "If you want to pray, this is how you have to pray." Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So there is no confession of sin. Yeah? So if you have been praying and always start confessing your sin first, just put that aside. Because as you go through your prayer, 
if there is sin, the Holy Spirit will convict you. So we will go on. He says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Which this morning we have done it. With worship, we have adored God. We have made him great. Isaiah chapter 40 says that uh, God is eternal. 40 verse 12 to 14. It says, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Measure heaven with a span and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. Weighed the mountains in scale and the hills in a balance. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? Or as his counselor has taught him. With whom did he take counsel? And who instructed him and thought him in the path of justice? Who thought him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? So there are so many Bible passages that we can use to adore God. God is eternal. And Jesus didn't say, my father. He said, our father. So when we come to God, we are God's family. God has a family. And you are part of the family. And you have to focus on the family of God. It's not about you. He has called all of us. And so you have to have a mindset that it's a family business. And you are coming to the father who is the father of all. And Jesus said that our father. So I didn't see uh, meet my father. My father died when I was young. So I can't even put a picture. So I don't know how a father fi a figure feels like. Some of us, we don't have a father. We don't know our father. Our father walked away. Some of us, our father didn't even accept the pregnancy. So we don't have the feel of a father. But we have come to God's family. The Bible says, Jesus says that God is our father. So if you don't have that feel of a father, God is our father. Amen? Amen? And have that mindset that he is there for you. He is not there to count on your sins. Come just as you are in prayer and find a scripture to adore him, to thank him. Monica, thank you for once again for the song choice this morning. And thank him for what he has done for you. That mindset will really propel you, set you ready to pray. And whilst you go on worshiping, if you read the full of the Lord's Prayer, the things that we have to ask for within prayer, there's only one sentence that uh, capture our needs. Give us this day our daily bread. And we stop there. And then forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom. So you can see that the full, our Father who art in heaven at all, and then ask your uh, petitions. And the rest is about you working yourself, spiritual, uh, uh, putting yourself in a spiritual position where you can align yourself with God. So we have to focus more of our spiritual being because that is who, who we are. We are no more physical, we are, living, we are spirits living in a body. 
And the Bible says God is a spirit. So what we have to focus on is how we can get our spirit connect to God. And once we are able to connect our spirit to God, we are able to pray according to what God wants us to pray. So I'm going to go through. Um, so the disciples of Jesus, the Bible says in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, after Jesus has pray, prayed, the, one of the disciples came along and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. So it could be that they have seen how Jesus prayed and said, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. Every Jew knows how to pray. From their childhood, they know how to pray. But for them to ask Jesus to teach them how to pray, then they would have seen something different about Jesus' prayer. And Jesus is the only one that can teach us how to pray. And so Jesus said, this way you have to pray. And then he used a parable to describe the persistency of prayer. So if you go home, you uh, read Luke chapter, one, uh, chapter 11, verse 1. And then he said, If any one of you, your child asks you for fish, you will give him serpent. If you, any one of you, your child asks you for egg, you won't give him scorpion. You evil dads, knows how to give perfect gifts to your children. How much more when you ask for the Holy Spirit? So he didn't say when you ask for anything, when you ask for the Holy Spirit. So he was, uh, last week, Mark used parables and taught us how Jesus wants to drive home what he wants to actually articulate to his hearers. And at the end, you will see exactly what he wants to say. So with this prayer, he said, if you ask, you will be, you will be uh, answered. If you knock, you will be open. If you seek, you will find. And then and at the end of it, it says, if you ask, for the Holy Spirit, your Father will give it to you. So his emphasis is on our spiritual maturity. And that is what Jesus is interested in. If we are able to, uh, to be able to work on our spiritual maturity, we will fall in line with what God wants to do in our lives. So... Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I want us to compare scriptures. Uh, if you can put Genesis chapter 4, how God, uh, this prayer that we want God to lead us not into evil. How? Does God really bring us temptation in our way and then we are asking him not to lead us into temptation. So when we read Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel, the Bible says that they offered sacrifice to God and Cain's one wasn't accepted. And then God spoke to Cain. Why are you upset? If you did write you would have also been accepted. Uh, sin is at your door, but master it. And Cain didn't master it. God talked to him about it, and then go ahead and kill his brother. That's one. So God will always appear to deliver us from evil. And it is your responsibility to heed to the warning. 
So he will always lead us not into temptation. He will deliver us. And another scripture, Genesis chapter 20. That's where Abimelech took Sarah and God appeared in a dream and told Abimelech that the woman that you have taken is Abraham's wife. If you, if you lay hands on him, you are a dead man. And then Abimelech said, I did that with out of integrity because Sarah him, herself says that Abraham is his brother. And God said, that is the reason why I have appeared to you, so that you don't sin against me. And Abimelech wake up and hand over Sarah back to Abraham. So we have two people here. Cain went and did what anger caused him to do. And Abimelech took Sarah out of lust. And then God appeared and he obeyed. Now when we go to Acts chapter 5, verse 2, Ananias and Safari, they sold their land and decided to keep part of it. And when they come to Peter, Peter said, why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? So they calculated out of greed. So anger, lust, greed. So these things work in us. The things that our eyes, the Bible says, when Eve saw the fruit, it appeals to his eyes, her eyes. So lust, I, what our eyes behold, what our emotions and the things that comes within us that lead us into temptation. And then God uses dream. God used dream to talk to me a lot. Uses vision to warn us through his word. So you have to actually work on your spiritual life. How? You want God to speak to you and be ready. When he speaks to you, be ready to act. And that is where he will not lead you into temptation. And he will deliver you from evil. So we are going to look at the spirit. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. Verse 3, 2 to 3. It says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon He's talking about Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him. And we have six streams of the Spirit. It says, The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of God. And it says that it shall make him of quick understanding. It shall make him quick understanding. So we have to pray. You have to work on our spiritual maturity. And these are there. It was upon Jesus. And if we are following Jesus, then God is happy to give us the spirit as we saw so it in Luke chapter 11, that if we ask for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he will give it to us. So these are the things that we have to really, really, really concentrate on our spiritual maturity. Because, say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these, these things that the pagans run after, he will give to us. And 
you don't even have to spend a lot of time to get that because when you are praying, the Holy Spirit will just lay it on your heart and you pray for it. And you won't struggle to think about what to pray for because one, you have worshipped God. You have made him great. And he says, his kingdom come. The kingdom will start from you. It begins with you. And then you have to pray for others. Because remember, it's God's business and it's a God's family. And you are part of the family. So when you come, it's not about you, only about you. Remember the woman in Luke? He went to his neighbor to ask for, for bread for a friend, not for herself, because he got a visitor for a friend, not for herself. And if you put your mind to God's kingdom, all other things, you don't have to struggle to pray for it. Because God wants us to taste heaven on earth. He said, your kingdom come as it is in heaven, so it should be on earth. So it's not about future when we go to heaven. Right here, heaven on earth. And this is what we have to crave for. And once we are connected with the Holy Spirit and God, he says the Spirit searches the deep things of God. Even we don't know what to pray about. Romans chapter 8, we don't know what to pray about. But the Spirit himself searches and the deep things of God, and we groan and pray. So, in fact, we will come before God with a bunch of stuff. But actually, there is important things that the Holy Spirit will lead you to pray about. So today, I want us to spend time to pray. I don't want to talk about a lot of things because it's time of prayer, and I want us to actually work on our spiritual maturity, pray for the Holy Spirit to take control. We are not going to go into groups. We are going to pray. Everybody is going to pray aloud to God. If we go into groups, we still pray aloud for somebody to hear. So the same way, pray aloud to God. Amen. Can we be on our feet as we start praying? How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All oh, we see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All oh, we see how great, how great is our God. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise and my heart will sing how great is our God you are the name above all names you are worthy of all praise and my How great is our God. Open your mouth and worship our God. He says, Our Father, you are in heaven. Hallowed. Hallowed the name of the Lord. 
praise him. He is eternal God. He is the righteous one. He is the everlasting father, the great I am, the beginning and the end. He is the alpha and the omega. He is our God who is a present help in time of trouble. You are always there. You are the creator of all the universe. All flesh, O oh Lord, look unto you for their daily meal. We exalt you, O oh Lord, far above the heavens. We bless your name. You are the living God, the holy one, the righteous one, invisible God. But we can see your hand in action, in creation. We worship you, O oh Father. We bow before you this morning. You are our Father, and we exalt you. For this is who you are. You, you, we thank you, Lord. And we bless you. Hallelujah. We give you praise. I want us to pray for our spiritual maturity. First of all, for insight. Spiritual insight. Understanding. When you read the word of God, you will gain understanding so that you will know the will and the plan of God. So I want us to pray that God will open, our eyes is open, but our sight to give us insight of his word, insight of the things that he wants us to know. Spiritual awareness. Pray that you become spiritual awareness in, in the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and of might and the fear of God. If the fear of God is there, you will not want to sin against God. When he speaks, when the word comes to you, you will be able to depart from it, not to go into it. So pray that your Lord will open your spiritual eyes, understanding, and able to decipher the wrong from evil, quick understanding to act when he, the Holy Spirit prompts you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this morning. We come before you, Lord, that you will open our eyes. Our eyes is open, but give us spiritual insight, understanding, quick understanding, wisdom that we are able, the giftings that you have made available for us, that we will walk in it and we will dwell in it so that we will connect into your spirit. Give us a spiritual awakening. Lord, the things that is dead in our spirit, we pray that you will revive it once again. Our time of prayer, our time of, of worship, our time of reading in, the, in your word, Father, these are the things that help us to grow spiritually. And we ask that you will help us, Lord, that any laziness, spiritual death that has taken control over our spirit development, spiritual development, we pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, all these things will go away and that we will stand alive and stand awakening in your word, whenever we pick the word to read, we will not feel lazy. Our heart will yearn to read your word. Our heart will yearn to, to, to pray. Our heart will yearn to focus on the things that you, are, uh, you, you, you want us to do. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that God has a plan for us. A plan that has a successful end. And he has a purpose for us. So for you to know the purpose of God, you have to unite with the Holy Spirit. So let's pray that the plans that God has for us, that is what will accomplish in our life and not what we want. So let's pray that the, what God has planned for our life will, will be accomplished and we will be able to connect to it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word that is always there for us, that you have a plan, a lot of plans that we haven't even unveiled, we don't even know about, but you unveil it unto us as and when it is suitable for you to do. 
And so we want to pray, O oh Lord, that we will focus that you are a good father. When we ask anything, you give us a good thing, and you will never give us anything that you don't want us to have. And so we pray that we will be able to align ourselves to your plan and purposes in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray and we thank you. Let's pray also that the people that God will bring to us, we, it, we will make impact. Our connection with the people that connect to us, we will make impact because whatever that we are, we reflect the image of God on this earth. And so we pray that the people that God bring, we, we brings into our life, we will make impact unto them. So let's pray. Father, we pray for those that you will make available for us to connect. We ask that, Lord, our connection with anyone that you will give us the opportunity to connect, we will make impact because our life is reflecting you and our, we have connected with you and we have gained understanding, we have gained wisdom, we have gained the fear of God that we will be able O oh God, to articulate our lives and ourselves uh, better so that they will know that you, we are your children, we are your followers, we are your, your, your ambassadors in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you that you are prayer answering God, your kingdom. You only God, you reign and rule over this planet and we pray that you will rule in the hearts of men along your oh Lord, that this nation will come to know you. The fear of God will grip our hearts. If we have the fear of God, the people around us will convert, convert what we have. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will rule in our heart. You will rule in our church. You will rule in our nation. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. <laughs>